Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you, and grant that they may know and understand what things they ought to do, and also may have grace and power faithfully to accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson is taken from Amos. This is what the Lord God showed me. The Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, See, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to King Jeroboam of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very center of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos had said, has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah, earn your bread there, and prophesy there, but never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. Now therefore hear the word of the Lord. You say, do not prophesy against Israel, and do not preach against the house of Isaac. Therefore, thus says the Lord, your wife shall become a prostitute in the city, and your sons and your daughters shall fall by the sword, and your land shall be parceled out by line. You yourself shall die in an unclean land, and Israel shall surely go into exile away from its land. The word of the Lord. We will alternate the reading of the psalm. I will read the first verse and the congregation the second and so on. God takes his stand in the council of heaven. He gives judgment in the midst of the gods. Save the weak and the orphan. Defend the humble and needy. Rest 
They do not know, neither do they understand. They go about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. Nevertheless, you shall die like mortals and fall like any prince. The second reading is taken from Colossians. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ in Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father. In our prayers for you, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. You have heard of this hope before in the word of the truth, the gospel that has come to you. Just as it is bearing fruit and growing in the whole world, so it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day you heard it and truly comprehended the grace of God. This you learn from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, and he has made known to us your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. The word of the Lord.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Just then, a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now, by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan was traveling and came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them, and then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper and said, take care of him and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these do you think was the neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, the one who showed mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Today we have a very special guest gracing our pulpit. We have Bryant Frost, who was one of our missioners to uh, Puerto Rico, and we will hear today about his trip. Bryant. May God inspire the words that we hear and move our hearts to the glory of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, and thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, so as Meg so graciously noted in our weekly bulletin, uh, Victor and I had the opportunity uh, traveling to Puerto Rico our first week of summer break. So this was two weeks ago. Uh, we went with all four Pierces, so that's Emily, James, Isabel, and Julia. Uh, and Tillman Peters, and parishioners and leaders from St. Francis of Potomac. Uh, along with us, uh, so we're going to give special thanks to uh, Pastor Allison, who planned the entire trip for us, which is wonderful, and uh, our project manager uh, inside Puerto Rico, uh, a gentleman named Ash, who's now back in Missouri, living in the heat. Um, so despite all of the adventures and travel I've had of 23 years in the Navy, uh, growing up uh, in the mountains, I've never been on a mission trip and had no idea what to expect. Um, so I got to Puerto Rico and I thought, Puerto Rico, this is going to be amazing. We're going to go to the beach. Uh, you think about Puerto Rico, you see beaches, you see palm trees, waves, maybe a cold beverage. Um, and that is where we spent 10% of our time. The other 90% was spent in a small town in the interior of the island, um, kind of east central mountains um, in a small town called Calle, uh, which is a really um, very poor area of the island uh, that was hit very hard by Hurricane Maria um, five years ago. So we got there, we didn't, under, we didn't know what we were going to do. We heard maybe painting, maybe construction, and I was like, great, I did a lot of construction work, I can help build a house, I can put on a roof, I can nail down shingles, but what are we going to do? So we got there. 
and uh, we did our first site visits with Ash. We found out we were into a lot of painting. And painting has a special place in my heart. I grew up on a farm in Colorado, and I had to paint our barn where we kept our horses. And I was so bad at it, my dad stopped me halfway through, and he's like, Brian, stop painting. You're done. To this day, 35 years later, when I go back to visit, I still see the streaks and the mislaid paint, and he still won't let me fix it because he's concerned where it's going to go. So now, I'm responsible for beautifying these houses in Puerto Rico. I'm like, what am I going to do? But uh, I, I had faith that I've been called to do this. I arrived there with an open heart, an open mind to see what's going to happen. Um, and so we, we dug in. And this is kind of where my personal transformation of the week started because I thought maybe we're going to build a house. We're going to do something lasting and impressive and we're going to have this amazing thing at the end. Um, it turned out we were well, one group of us, we divided three groups. One group was resealing a roof that was damaged by the hurricane five years ago. Uh, we're going to reseal that roof and make it waterproof so that there was no more rain coming into this woman's home. Another home we were painting and the occupant selected a lovely electric lime green color uh, that really, really popped in the jungle. And uh, that was the color he chose, so we went with it. And the project I worked on, we uh, painted the entire interior of a gentleman's house, and then we painted the entire exterior of his house, and we, um, we also helped make his house more accessible because he was a recent um, double amputee, and so we were helping him to make his house so that he could actually move his wheelchair through it. He cleaned out a lot of uh, trash he built up over years, you know, moved his clothesline down so he could actually use it, and some other things that were, you know, we hope helpful to him. So, you know, these were the things we were doing, and I reflected that, and I didn't know these people. And as I was preparing my sermon for today, um, someone very wise, I respect quite a bit, my wife, so we'll start, start, with, start with the readings. What do you, uh, what do the readings say today? And uh, they chose a week with a softball for me, so the Good Samaritan um, was working with someone he didn't know, right? He didn't know the, he found this guy on the road, he'd been robbed and beaten and was half dead, and he helped him recover him. And that is kind of a little bit of what we were doing, right? We were finding people we didn't know, but then by the end of the week, we were taking ownership of the projects we had. Uh, similar to how the Samaritan left money with the innkeeper saying, help this man, I'll pay you more later. We were finding ways to help make these homes better for people, not just painting, but improving them. So I think in our time, we built a relationship with the people we were working with and helped improve their life. So what I, what I came away from this with, and uh, I think a lot of us came away with, is to to approach these projects with an open mind. Don't come and say, I'm only doing one thing, I'm only going to paint and then go home, or I'm only going to do this project and then I'm gonna leave, but, you know, grow from it, grow with the relationship you're making, make some friends along the way, and help each other learn. You know, we've got great friends now at St. Francis. We deepen our friendship within our own congregation. I certainly owe Emily some time back because I asked her lots of, uh, questions the senior warden as we do our search, but uh, there's a lot of a lot of friendship and camaraderie. We did have some good time. Like I said, 10% of the time was spent on the Puerto Rico beach. So uh, Victor got to splash in the ocean. We went snorkeling. We did some skit, some uh, diving down there. We saw some sights and we uh, spent a day kayaking in the evening. So that was uh, wonderful. I can't speak enough about how great Puerto Rico is. Um, but really the, the best part of this trip was meeting people, um, you know, getting expressed God's love through our good works and hopefully making a difference in the lives of people we helped. Um, so through my entire time in the Navy, my time in school, I've never been able to speak publicly without giving, without asking for something or issuing a challenge. And what I'm gonna ask you all to do is I'm going to ask, as you go through life, as we leave here and go forth today, open your heart, open your eyes, look for God's will. What does God want of you 
what opportunities is God providing to you that you've just got to see that person in need and can take them up. So thank you all for listening this morning. You're an amazing community. I love being here. And have a great day. Thank you. stand and confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people will be Form 3 on page 387. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Good morning, lovely people. If you are a newcomer uh, or a guest or a visitor to uh, Christ Church, on the back of your bulletin, there's a little strip of paper that lets you fill in your name and some information about you. If you will do that and tear it off and put it into our um, collection plate, it'll come to me, and when I receive it, then I will give you a call and welcome you here and see if we can get to know you just a little bit better. Carol has an announcement about a service that she's doing for us tonight. Carol, do you want to tell them about that? The service is at five o'clock. It'll be in the chapel. Uh, it is a vigil. We'll have some readings and an opportunity for small group discussion. It, was, it will not include communion, and you are welcome to bring anybody that you think might uh, want to come. It is to um, deal with the response to the Supreme Court and the concerns that people have had about the end of Roe v. Wade. So feel free to join us five o'clock in the chapel. Okay, and Bryant is going to tell you a little bit about where we are in the search process. Bryant? All right, good morning. So, on the search process, we are definitely moving along. I know I've been saying that for quite a while, but this week we are going to uh, finish writing up our uh, parish profile sheet. We're going to submit um, kind of our parish resume to the diocese to send out. Now, that's going to include um, a bunch of issues talk about ourselves, our culture of our church. It's going to talk about our vital signs or parish signs of parish vitality, kind of how we see ourselves, what we're looking for in a new rector, and possibly most importantly, it's going to have all of our financial disclosures for ourselves and for the school. Um, you know, we've flipped a lot of rocks in the last two years. We found a lot of surprises, but uh, you know, at this point, I think we're ready to kind of show show the world what we've got, so that we can now get a new rector moving in. So we're going to give that to the diocese this week. Once they get that turned around, then they're going to be ready to put out the, uh, you know, start putting out the job ads so we can start getting, uh, moving out on the interviewing process and hopefully get a new rector in sometime late summer or early fall. That's the plan. I'll be in the back if there's any questions after the service. Thank you. Yay. That's good. Um, Someone asked me if I was actually leaving when I leave on Saturday to fly over the pond to go to England, Ireland, and Scotland. The answer is, no, I'm just going on vacation. <laughs> I will be back for a while. Um, but then, it's true, we are beginning to wind towards the end of this thing. And uh, I will be finishing up my last Sunday on September 11th. So that's, that's my, but Carol, Carol will be with you until the end of the age, okay? So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so that is very good news, right? And um, so everything is moving along. We, we're beginning to get all of our uh, placements for uh, the new staff members that we want in the, the, the right places with, for the Christian formation person. If you have someone who would like that job, please let me know, okay? Um, and we'll, we'll get that taken care of. And then we, Allison is in the process of forming the committee that will find us the new interim director of ministry. And then of course, we should be getting, I, I talked with Robert this week, Robert Phillips, and he knows that our stuff is coming by the next week. So he's very excited to get that put out for us. So. There's a lot of good news that's going on this summer, isn't there? That's really good. And Katie should be back, I think, around the 11th. I think that's when she returns to us. So she's been moving um, the farm. That sounds funny, but her grandparents have owned a farm, and um, they're selling it. It's been in the family for generations. And they're selling it to... Um, to the faculty at Virginia Seminary who are going to turn it into a retreat center. Isn't that just really cool? So that's exciting. So exciting. Um, so like um, Brian said, you never leave without challenge or asking for something, okay? 
So I'm going to say, ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. Amen.
be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, 
you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember the poor, visit the sick, pray for peace and work for justice and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.
Yeah, good stuff. 